what we've been doing in natural farming lately um, was um, Cho Young Song, Master Cho's son, just visited us again. Um, he came, he's really interested in pursuing and developing the, um, like an international learning center here. So both, both Master Cho and Cho Young Song both are, are really been interested in making this happen. Um, so they just visited um, last week. Yeah. Yeah, last, last week. The 27th of February. Wow. March twice in a month. Yeah. Well, so I mean, because when they came and they did the workshop here, and they were they were so excited and and really um, had identified a lot of um, to to say this in like a friendly way, like low hanging fruit in terms of agricultural innovation, and they can said to me several times that you know like they've really reviewed all the farming information there is, you know, like, like Asian agriculture and, um, you know, American agriculture, like all around the world. And they, they believe theirs to be the most superior in a sense of the most low cost and then the most um, agriculturally friendly on top of that because you can afford to treat large tracts of land. So one of, the, one of the things that's different about Hawaii that, than Korea is we have like large tracts of land to, to farm. And so there are methods to be, you know, to be able to cover that area. I think that's, that's why they were so excited to, to be here. That's the weather. You know, Korea, you can have only one crop a year for cabbage, for the kimchi. But here we can have five crops in the Waimea. <laughs> so it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. So, so I, I think, um, I think what they're planning on doing is to put in a couple acre farm that would then have all the crops that we grow in Hawaii, and to try to replicate any in every situation. So they, they looked at our land to, to see if that was a spot they wanted to do it, but our land isn't like, um, there's a couple valleys that run through it. So they can't really have like one farm where you just like look across and you see like everything growing. So they're, they're looking at maybe a, a few other spaces to put it, put it in. And then that enables them to have, um, you know, like a learning lab here that anything and everything they can test here growing so when they wanted to like prove out papaya they can do it banana they can do it all these things so um, they'll be returning again in uh, late April early May right in that time zone and at that time um, we're probably gonna have another workshop and this time instead of having the workshop be all day it would be probably from like one o'clock to six o'clock or one to five, kind of in the afternoon. So that way, um, and and just run it in the afternoons. So that way, any you know more people can get to the. Because um, I know it was every almost everybody that's here was there, right? And it was kind of hard to like like feed your animals or like do do any of that stuff, right? In the so I'm thinking if we do an afternoon thing, it might be approachable to more people um, so we're, we're thinking of that um, and um, yeah they, so they saw the the projects and they scouted the sites this time and that's that's essentially what they were doing on this trip um, and also figuring out um, the logistics of being Koreans and then working in Hawaii and how that relationship works um, with like visas and things like that. So just a whole bunch of investigations. So um, if you know, like when they come back, if you're interested in having them um, check out or you know ass assess your land or, or even your, your neighbors, so that way your neighbors aren't spraying gross stuff near you, um, then they're, they're gonna be available that time. I think that's we're real interested. Cool. Well, 
I think we have seven acres. No. So plus surrounded by three hundred acres. So. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll. Um, I mean, I know, but uh, we'll be contacting. I guess we'll, we'll have a meeting between now and then, and and through email, get that set up. Uh, so that, um, and then while they were here visiting, um, Jake, call me on that issue. Call me as soon as you can. I might have a spot for you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. A lot. See you. A lot. So the other thing they did, this is like world first too, is they gave me the Korean book, which is now in print. Yep, signed. So they now they now have this book, the ultra low cost out in Korean, and then the English book here, which we got at the seminar for fifty bucks, is now on Amazon for seventy five bucks. See, so scored. Should have bought like ten. <laughs> oh. But this book is not, it's, it's in the Kindle version, and then it's here in hard copy. Um, and um, has anyone read almost the entire book? Yeah. <laughs> it's really good, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Very easy to understand. Pictures, very well done. I, the, the guy that did the translating did a really great job, I think. Yes, it's really a spot on, yeah. For for being for coming from this Korean into like English, it's it's solid, yeah. So so um yeah. I think this book um changed the world, bring um organic farming and I I really do think that um the Jadam methods developing it is gonna help us transition any any and all farms to pro pro environmental and and then keep our yields up um and switch to you know natural farming um yes i want to just share with you i went to their uh, website it's in korean you cannot read it yet but they will have a american uh, english uh, site but they one of the um uh, great farmer uh, they he used uh, their method uh, but then I don't know how many times they treated the land, is their land, but they didn't have to give any or uh, after that any nutrient ten years. They just water and then produce all these great grapes. <coughs> yeah, it's amazing. The farmer wrote it in their they can write their what they're experiencing in their website. Yeah, I thought, whoa, so just it once and for 10 not, not once. There's a different stuff going on. Yeah, but then yeah, one of the stories like that. Yeah, yeah so sharing sharing online through the Jadam site. Yeah, the, they the share, farmers share all their experience. Yeah. So, yeah, so, um, hope, yeah. I think for in terms of support, they'll help us out that way, and then once they move to Hawaii, it'll be really easy um, to get in contact. Um, so, um, what I wanted to talk to you guys about today was just making a concept in here super simple and kind of translating it into like a, a mindset or a concept that we can think about um, from the island perspective. And this even to like um, like ancient Hawaiians and how they were thinking about the environment and the different forces of nature coming together. And so I, with um, Joe McGinn, who's a natural farmer on Oahu, talked to me about um, making Aina aid. So you know, you know like Gatorade? Like it's what you drink when you're doing, but this is Aina aid, it's what you give to your plants, right? So and he was describing the natural farming things. He was talking about Aina aid. You know, how do you get your plants like pumped up and ready to go to the gym? You give them Aina aid. And uh, so I took that name and put it on here. And it's, you know, like if you ever watch the movie Idiocracy, it's like electrolytes, what something craves, right? I forget, but um, so it's, you know, Aina aid, what our, or what our land craves. <laughs> Um, 
so in in the recipe they give us there's there's three simple things and I was really thinking about this um, and and their recipe is is in the book and they call this um, Jadam microbe solution JMS um, where is it does anyone know the page number yeah, I memorized the page. Yes, yes. <laughs> You're a true, true Jadamite. Um, so here, here it is. It's, it's, um, it's in the book here, and they show it happening. And so essentially what they're doing is they're starting with potatoes. And so in my picture here, I have a little taro. So what, what the potatoes are is a, is a starch. Uh, or a simple sugar and the same thing is true of the taro it's like a little simple starch um, then they add in um, salt into their um, into the mix and on here in the middle I have seawater so this is our, our salt going in and then they add in leaf mold that they find on the ground and so to simulate leaf mold, what I did is I said it was the, the kane or the, the menehunes. And so you have the, the life, the sea, and the starch. And in Hawaiian culture, those are tr traditionally attri uh, like, yeah, attributed to like the, the, the man is kane or that, that life force form. The other, the middle one is kanaloa, which is like the seawater and being in the ocean, the, the kind of the god of the ocean. And then the starch is kind of like Lono, which is the, the caretaker, the guy that makes all the plants happen. And so if you take those three and you make it, Kane is the, the microorganisms or the little menehunes, the tiny things that work that we don't see happen. Kanaloa being our ocean and Lono being our starch. These are the same three things, like archetypal forms that they're in including into this mixture in the same way. So you have potatoes, salt, microorganisms, which is the leaf mold, and then you add those into water and you swirl it around. And when that happens, you combine it in the perfect, like in the, in the right ratio, then it starts to bubble like this. And has anyone, has anyone done it and successfully got it to bubble? And it and it works re really well, yeah. This stuff is revolutionized our farm just in a month. I have fruit trees we've had no fruit on them for four or five years, and in two weeks, using JMS and JLF, we had blossoms and now fruit. What kind of fruit? Unbelievable. Yeah. What kind of fruit? Well, one of them is a Suriname cherry tree. We have two side by side, and one's been prolific every year, but one has never produced, and it's just full. Wow, a mango tree it. that's never yet, huh? a mango tree that's huh? about six years old that's never yet huh? produced is now full of blossoms. Oh my. And oh. Orange oh. tree, lemon tree, a couple lemon trees. Unbelievable. Avocado. One avocado yes. tree had no avocados on it in four or five years. Better have a true narrow to, to Sorry? announce that. <laughs> yeah, I just. No, I believe what Dr. Park's saying. That's almost like newsworthy. If you wrote to the Tribune Herald and you told them, miracle in my and yard they'll, of they'll just say, like. You're yeah. from Guahala? Smoke too much weed up there, bro. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the Gohala Mountain News or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. That's a good idea. Good. Yeah, no, well, spreading spreading what um, the success stories, I think, is, is one of the most important things with this. Right. Because people often ask, like, where is, where is the proof? And it's hard to, like, prove that. But if your fruit wasn't before and then it, now it is, obviously something is going on, right? I think that's what Jada wants uh, the farmers to, you know, what you experience, you know, take a picture and then what happened after they used uh, their solution. Yeah. So other farmers can see. Even myself, uh, I just used JMS. Um, my plan was kind of not doing good one plan, and I gave uh, 
uh, maybe one gallon, and next day already it just sprout. I mean, it, you can see the energy. Yeah. It just yeah. perk up. Maybe. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. But I figured in a month, you know, maybe like God came down at night and said, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm just going to fool with you guys. So I want to wait a couple of months and see, you know. Because I mean, it's just like a miracle. Yeah. We've been trying to do it. You know, we, we still have a lot of questions about that. Uh, I mean, we haven't made our wedding agent yet, so we got all the, the stuff. And I saw your video on the YouTube video. So uh, we also had a grove of bananas that had bungee top. And so we, I remember what Master Joe said, the first thing is strengthen the immune system of the plant before you try anything else. So we put GM, GMO on that at JLF and about 85% of the bunch of cops gone. We still have on some of the older bananas there still is a little bit. So I want to see the next couple of weeks before we spray any sulfur. Cool. Wow, Just the JLS is working. <laughs> that's like a miracle. Yeah, we don't want to get too excited beautiful. yet because it's what? It's only been a month since the workout? Yeah. 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 A little over a month. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so easy. Secret. <laughs> well, so you think you think it's a secret, but actually it's been around for like thousands of years, this same idea. Yeah. And just figuring out how to combine it and what what do the words actually mean? And so we know that this is the microorganisms. So gathering that, either the really nice... We, we actually asked um, um, Young Song while he was here, because my dad made um, JMS and he used from the wood chip pile. And from the wood chip pile, you see all the nice mycelium inside of it and you think, oh, that's really rich. But he said, don't use that one. He said to use the one where it's... You can take the mulch and you put it on the ground and then the dirt, and then grab like the dirt, that little bit of stuff that starts to puff up. You know how the dirt kind of balls together under, and, and that's the stuff you want more than, more than anything. That's what you're saying. So go to an area where you see um, mycelium, but in dirt, not, not mycelium in wood, not mycelium in a compost pile is, is what he was suggesting. Because those, those are the microbes that really work in the, in the dirt. So actually, we have we harvested a lot of leaf mold from an old wood chip pile. We used all the wood, you know, and it was the stuff way at the bottom. That's and it, it worked good. Worked good, so yeah. this will work even better. I don't know if we can handle it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, and and when I did it too, what I what I did was I took some dirt that was just like like there was under nice leaf pile, took some of that, and then I also took some nice like composty stuff and put it in and, and I did use as well. So I, I think the main thing is diversity over overall in, in here, the, the diversity of the microbes being the most important. Um, you know that vine that's, I don't know if you guys have it down here, but we have it everywhere in Kohala where it goes around plants, trees. Pinot Miley? Sorry? Pinot Miley? You know what it is? This stuff is really super aggressive, so so Emilio is helping us out. He's like, let's try this. This stuff is so aggressive, and it's just unbelievable. The energy in there, I mean, you can feel it. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> so anything that's super aggressive, invasive species stuff, you know, putting it in the JLF, or trying different different kinds of things. So. Solid. Um, so the the basic recipe here, I made it instead of a um, 132 gallon thing as they were suggesting, which I don't ha I don't have a 132 gallon container. I don't know anyone who really does. <laughs> I have trash cans though, and trash cans are about 25 gallons, the the one I have at least. And I measured it by just filling up the five gallon bucket into the trash can, and about about five four or five, 20 gallons, 25 gallons, somewhere in between there, went into it. And so I scaled the recipe down to 25 gallons and just made it so it's 100 grams of, um, of leaf mold, 100 grams of sea salt, and then 200 grams of the boiled potato. 
and that is a lot better and easier for me and if you want to know how much those are and you don't have a scale um, you can come up and measure the salt and the potatoes to see how much if I put these two potatoes on how much does that weigh it's 346 grams so to give you an idea of what is 200 grams of something look like because you don't have to be right on with this it's just an approximation but if you know like what this looks like then when you go home super easy to know okay 200 grams is this much and that much salt so I found that the easiest because I really had no idea how much 100 grams of salt was without a scale until I measured it and, it, and I was at the first time I did it I added like half as much salt and the second time I did it I added like the correct amount and both times it worked but I think I got more minerals the, the second time so you're using salt rather than just getting seawater yeah you can also use seawater but um but I just got a bag of sea salt and was using this so that way I knew because I'm always curious if I go to certain areas there's fresh water coming out and I, I don't know if I'm getting the same amount of salt so I just used um, you could do either though sea salt's easy did you get good bubbling with yours good foaming I did um, the first time I didn't and then the next times I did um, and I increased the amount of the initial leaf mold that I put in my second time and then I got more bubbling mm -hmm. I think the first time I didn't put enough um, are you using any manure not in my initial part oh, oh JLF yeah um, I, I did and then I just bought um, this fog mister thing and I just used it the other day and now all of my pigeon peas that I cut back they're all like I don't know if it's just because it's spring or whatever but they're all just throwing so many new um, little leaf growths on this like stump that I had cut back and I figured it would grow back but it's growing so um, so much on there that I think it's because I, I sprayed this mist thing I did it about um, like five days ago and I'm just testing out this mister before I like recommend it to people because it was it was about hundred and seventy dollars and it plugs in and essentially what it does is it um, it's a like a reverse vacuum so instead of like sucking the stuff it's blowing it out and then it has a like a little mister right in the center and so when you turn it on it just is it sounds like kind of like a jet engine and just just blasts all this stuff about I don't know 20 feet out in front of you and so I'm just testing that out to like really mist everything and because I really wanted to see I'm, I'm testing the papayas uh, at my house that I have um, there's all that black spot that black mold on it and that's one of the things that we can't have for the papayas the papaya project um, so I'm trying I'm really trying to eliminate that using and I think a, a small mister is the way to really like coat my whole plant and I use the wetting agent in it too and I felt a little weird walking through all the wetting agent thing I felt like afterwards like after I was walking through my garden after I misted it with the wetting agent everything looked so clean like I just sprayed soap on everything right but it looked everything had like this super clean look to it and then and I felt like a little bit like I, I had like a layer of wax on me which is probably just like the misted soap you use wetting agent on the stuff and did you combine it with anything yes yeah, so I used wetting agent and then I I put in my my JMS um, so um, I dilute, diluted the JMS 1 to 5 in, into there and then I diluted the wetting agent 1 to 150 which is like a fair amount it's more than and then I put in my fermented plant juices into that and so you mixed all that together and that's what your mist was yeah and so far I've only missed it at once I want to I'm gonna continue to experiment with that and test like how long this like if the sprayer is good and everything works for me uh, well, when we made the JMS we tried several things about how long you know, let to get that foaming circling action and so we took a black uh, garbage container and it 
it created that stuff in one day because the heat and you know, we set it out in the sun etc so I don't know if that's good or not but before with the other containers like the Sinotech 55 gallons blue you know we have some red ones so we're trying different things but the black I mean in one day it was ready unbelievable so I don't know what you guys have experienced with that well I, I noticed um my dad did it at the same time as me and he did his on the south side of the house and I did mine on the north side of the house and his was ready faster than mine and I think because it was in the sun during the day and the water was actually warmer in his barrel Makes sense. Is he cover, are you guys covering yours? yeah okay. what? yeah in, in my experience it's about it's, it's about three days for me to reach peak bubble. And then, and if I, like, and it's about, I have to do it that third day, otherwise it's it's power right after that. Um, but, yeah. So the wedding agent was one to 150? Yeah. So one to 150 to like stick it. And then if for pesticides, it's one to 30 as, as like a kill, kill bugs kind of thing. Yeah. Very interesting, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I got this one. Yeah. So I, I re so so what I wanted what I wanted to do is to make it more approachable and more easy for everyone to understand um, this concept because I, I was explaining the farming the other day and I was talking about it, but really it's more than farming too. Like if we start spraying this around our rivers and, and everywhere, it, it'll really improve our whole environment. And because this is so inexpensive to make, if we really start thinking about it that way as like Ina aid, because we often think here like farming and like how to increase your crops and how to do this and that, but also like runoff and all that is important. And so I was trying to package this in a way that it's kind of like, this doesn't necessarily appeal to a farmer, but like, but almost anybody of to say like how to make this, but then why and how to use it and how to, you know, like if, if you have a, a lot and you just start spraying this stuff, now your lot is going to absorb pollution and, and turn pollution into nutrients and grow better. Um, and so that was that was kind of my goal with this. I, I think um, larger audience and, and sharing this knowledge, you know, we all know about health and those benefits of, of farming this way. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, this, I, I also put this, um, so to make it more available, I also bought ainaaid.com and I'm gonna put that up. And it would be nice to, if you, like Lou just gave some testimonial about it, but to put some things like about how it's helped you and then just advertise Ina Aid to people. Just so everyone's like, imagine if that was like the hip thing. Everyone's like putting Ina Aid on their land and then, you know, like, I want to make it fun and exciting. That's why I use cartoons. <laughs> it should be your camp, part of your campaign slogan. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. I, I can't talk about that here, though. No, no, no. Say anything. Yeah, but Sorry. no, it's all good. Um, I, as Lou, Lou did mention, I am running for mayor, but I don't want to have the with with Jane have that thing be where I cannot I cannot host the natural farming meeting and I cannot be here, so I don't want to have a. Sorry. No, 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 no. No, it's it's cool. I mean, it's it's good to know. Um, I think ideas like this will benefit our island, though. Um, promoting this, getting um, <laughs> maybe once in a while you put that in the toilet, uh, clear the septic tank. Yeah, and those kind of things. You know, we we should develop the idea of how we can clear the environment. And then actually, I used the, the Chatham sulfur solution they, they gave afterwards. I put my rash, I 
have an itchy rash and I put it in the book and start to do it. What did you put on? Oh, right. Sulfur. Sulfur. Yes. I've been doing the sulfur thing yeah. too, but I get yeah. You know, he he said uh, he treated all this uh, athletic feet foot. Right. Uh, three minutes you soak it in. That's all. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's it's uh, it's not you know toxic in, in the sense that uh, you know it, it damaged bad. But it, it works really good. A lot of athletic feet, I give you prescription. Oh, that's so expensive. It doesn't work. But the, do you dilute with the water? Uh, and, and, but one to one thousand? No, no, so. Ten to one. Just, Ten to one? Yeah, you probably need to do more. Actually, you can just, you know, Q-tips? You just soak it in and just rub it on Straight? that. Straight? No, just rub. The, yeah, but I mean, you didn't dilute it? No, so so the con the the recipe that you make the original one, then you want to dilute that one to ten. One to ten. Is okay. Then you can try that. No, then then from there, then then um, I gave that to my friend that diluted one to ten, and he put it on his really gross toe fungus, yeah. and now his toe nail is coming back, yeah. whereas he had that thing for I don't know like way too long. <laughs> so actually, you know, those things are the. As long as it's not really a you know, toxic uh, burn or anything, I think it's, uh, it's a good for. If it's good for the plants, I will not retry it. You know? the, the thing that you flush down the toilet is very, very expensive to buy. It's in my world. Yeah. You mean this one? No, the one you buy in the store. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is not. Nice. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I haven't tried it, but I, I just got the idea from him I'm talking about. No, and, and Hilo Bay, too. I, I saw from somebody, they were doing a study of whether they should make a hole in the break wall or not, and they were showing me the E. coli counts in the bay, mm -hmm. and apparently only, like, a small part of Hilo has actual, like, everyone else toilet goes down and then opens into like the flow field and so all the water goes down into the bay that's sewer water and the e coli is way up in the bay so if you were to put jms in your toilet and you flush that then instead of e coli going in the bay now it's jms going in the bay so it's like it's cleaning actually if i think good i'm on four words too yeah is it when you smell but the jam is a similar thing because yeah. even when I didn't have, had all, I had to test three different kinds. But the, when I use a mold, you know, from the kind of like a JMS, I try with the mold and I try with the IMO four, also I try with IMO two, and it will work. Yeah, if you can see the bubble, you know, circling bubble. You have to watch that, yeah? It's in three days. Yeah. But he worked really, really well. All three. Yeah. So besides potatoes, have you, have you tried other things, sweet potatoes or taro, or, or have you just tried potatoes? I used also taro, like, um, taro. it was, yeah, poi, taro. Yeah. And, it, and it worked with the taro. Um, the potatoes were faster. The taro took um, yeah, that. took an extra day for the tarot one to go, but it still was it's still absolutely possible. It's really it's really any starch. I think I think just the potato is is the ideal like breaks down fast starch for the for the system. But um, I haven't tried cassava yet, but I but I want to try because um, yeah. So we've been trying four different kinds of potatoes just to see what. And the yellow potatoes, for, I don't know why, seem to do much better with the JMO, so JMS. Yeah, we've tried red, russets, another brown potato, and then yellow seed. I don't know why that is, but. Huh. Huh. How about purple? Which one better? The yellow potatoes. Like Yukon gold, kind of? Purple. Huh. Yeah. I'm going to try Airbnb. Not, not the sweet potato. Because yeah. it's real high. We haven't tried the sweet potato yet. Airbnb, the, the, the edible Airbnb. 
edible yeah, but the, you can use any carbohydrate, but the Joyong Sang said the potato um, yeah, is the fastest. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so any oh, so any any questions on that at all? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, pretty pretty simple. If you want to see how much the potatoes are, how much that salt weighs, you can the scale. I just brought that for people to see. Um, other than that, I don't know. Maybe we could grab food and then just like natural farming discussion with each other. Yeah. Do you have a couple questions? Or, yeah, if, if, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and answer any questions. Um, the one was application and harvesting times. If you apply it the day before, can you harvest the next day? Or can you harvest the same day? I think the only, the only one you wouldn't want to harvest the, the same day is the sulfur one. And just because of the smell, but any other, any other thing, I, there was no... Um, there is no precautions for that, yeah. What about salmonella getting into the system? The idea, if you made your JMS properly, then the idea of any kind of contamination like that is is extremely slim because it. it your JMS, the power of your JMS is in diversity. So if one thing like salmonella was out of balance, and that's that's when you'd see like a symptom of salmonella, because there's there's always going to be a little bit everywhere, but if it's if it's taking off, then then you're not having diversity, and and so if you, so the properly made JMS has zero possibility of having salmonella contamination and outbreak from it and so uh, my thought is why you want to give a neutral when you're harvesting day to me it doesn't make sense um, I'm just asking what is the time difference when can you how long do you have to wait you mean before so I I would do would at least one day Two days, half a day. It needs one week. One week. So yeah, before harvest, if you're gonna give something, we're we're at, we're actively running an experiment right now, where we take the papaya fruit and then dip it into um, the wetting agent, and then we're doing one where you dip it in the wetting agent with um, the microbes in it, and then we're doing one where you dip it in the wetting agent with the sulfur in it. And the idea of that is post-harvest treatment. And the idea is to see if we can prevent rot in transit shipping. Because on some of the papayas, right where you pick them, the, it, you get stem rot that goes in. And so we're actively seeing which of those is the most effective to prevent that. And so actually, after harvest, we're dipping it in the microbe solution. And we're, so we're, we're experimenting with that right now. That would apply to lettuce as well, because um, once you pack them, the other leaves tend to start rotting. So, same application, maybe, yeah. Yep. Are you seeing any trend yet? Um, it's it's too too early to, to say. I mean, we they just started that last week, so they're shipping just the first. Yeah. And then the other question is um, county water and chlorine. Yeah. So far, I've been going around and testing. Oh, oh, so, so he was asking about county water and chlorine, if that's a problem. And I found that the chlorine is not a problem for the, for, even for my microbes, because I, I do it at my house, which I use rainwater from a water tank, and then I also do it at the school garden where I use a hose water, which is just straight um, county city water. Um, and I found that it, it works in both cases. I'm pretty sure when I'm spraying it through most, like it smells like chlorine, so I think it's off-gassing pretty well. Um, however, when I have been testing with the water agent, you know, using the wetting agent to test the hardness of the water, I found that all, every time I've tested um, county water, it's always been much harder 
than rainwater. The rainwater is always pretty soft and makes a bunch of bubbles on the top. Every time I've tested county water and I shake it, I don't get the bubbles to stay on the top for more than like three, four seconds. They all disappear. So I know that in terms of water hardness and the effectiveness of the wetting agent won't be as effective in county water. Um, and that, that was actually one of the things, um, my dad just got a water softener to, to run through so that he can, for this experiment. Because you, you can't use the wetting agent in hard water, it won't adhere. And the other day we did some, I forget, I was talking to somebody and they were looking up what's the difference between a detergent and a soap. You know, like you buy laundry detergent versus laundry soap. And it turns out that detergents have water softening chemicals in them. And that's the difference. That's the definition difference. So that when you run, when you, when your laundry is in the laundry, you put in the detergent, it automatically softens your water to clean the way it cleans. But if you just put a soap in and you're running hard water, it may not clean your clothes the same way. So when they sell detergents, it's always, it has a softener in it, um, which we just learned may, may or may not be damaging to the environment depending on how it, how it then decomposes after it goes, goes out. Um, and so this, this soap that we use always breaks down, um, but you have to look at your, um, the hardness of your water for it, its effectiveness. Yeah. So, you tried that? so recently what you I, tried that? I haven't used it in the clothes wash yet, but I do have a, I made a bottle of it just the, uh, you know, like a water bottle. And then I just took my knife and poked the top in it. And now I have a little squirt, um, soap thing and I use it for all my dishes now. To, to wash it and it's 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 effective um, I want to try it with putting in like some essential oil flavorings to it, like scents to it so because the regular scent is kind of like uh, it's okay but everything smells like wedding agent in your house you're like oh. <laughs> one, one thing that uh, you know, it's, uh, county water and uh, chlorine mostly if we wait for in several hours since they evaporate uh, alcohol. Yeah, so that might be something to consider. Not used immediately. And I haven't I haven't tested that either if county water that sat out for a day with the I don't know if I'm, I'm pretty sure the water hardness has to do with mineral content. So uh, you, had, you had a question? Um yeah I was wondering about gray water and how does that affect plants and kids? It's, um, if, if it's damaging to the plants when they're from the washing machine and so, dishwashing. You know. This this soap, this wetting agent that we make, should not be damaging to the environment. It 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 all depends on the amount of dilution that's happening. Well, but my question is like, what about the water coming out of a clothes washer? Would it affect the plants when detergent? That may. That, that like it just regular detergent. Yeah, laundry detergent. Yeah, is that how does that affect plants? Do you know? I would say if it doesn't say biodegradable on the package, then it's probably got something that's not gonna break down. Mm -hmm. And so you would wanna plant plants there that are gonna trap and like accumulate that and not eat them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like yeah, bananas are better for. <clears throat> coconuts and just eat the coconuts. <laughs> um, all right, so let's let's make a circle and we'll uh, sing a whole mind together before we eat.